I decided that I wanted to become a foster carer probably about 10 years ago. Indirectly, I've sort of had experiences of what it's like to need a foster carer or have to be involved with social services. And from that, it's just something that I felt that later on in life, I just really wanted to give something back to society. You got to understand the different types of foster carers that you can be. And so I decided that I wanted to become a respite carer, mainly because I run a, a small business. So respite care seems to just be the right fit because it means that it's not all of the time, but at the same time, I get to do what I love to do, which is to give something back and help foster carers as well. You know, it's so lovely. We've just had the Halloween um, activity day and there were some children that I'd not seen for a while and we did like a family uh, quiz thing and they all wanted to be on my team and they all remembered my name because I'm not in their lives all the time. It's really nice that actually they, they do still remember me and they're like, one of them in particular is coming to stay in a couple of weeks and she's like, oh yeah, I'm coming to stay in a couple of weeks and I'm looking forward to seeing Pebbles, which is my dog and what are we going to be doing when I'm there? And we are just one big family so we, we do get to stay connected and and keep in contact with each other, which I think is really important. It's really nice that, you know, even if they've only been with me for a weekend or a short amount of time, I'm, I like to think that that's something, a memory that they take away with them. And I always give them a photo or, or a couple of photos of their time with me so that they can take that away and just remember those memories as well. Well, you can see from my face that it clearly makes me very happy. And, and I think that's really important. From the get go with ISP, the start of the application process, it was just incredible. We have an amazing group of carers. We get together every month. I've got my supervising social worker, so I meet up with her every four weeks I can meet up with my fostering advisor as often as I like. It really is just a check-in to make sure you're okay, everything's okay and I think you know you need that and it also gives you reassurance that what you're doing is right and you can pick up the phone and you can phone someone at any time, any time, day or night. I also had a foster carer that I was able to go to out of hours who actually ended up coming over and supported me through you know, a really difficult time. And so it was just a really lovely feeling to know that you're not alone in this journey. Everyone has got experience in, in all different areas and even our most experienced carers, something might come up that's the first time they've ever experienced that and they reach out for help. I find being a foster carer so rewarding, I really do. The reason I wanted to become a foster carer was because I just really wanted to give something back, something back to society, something back to those incredible people that that do just, you know, give their lives to these children that have just had a really rough start in life. And so for me, I just, as challenging as it can be sometimes, the it's just so rewarding at the end of it. And I just feel like I've really grown as a person doing this. And even if that child can just take one tiny thing away from their short time that they stay with me, then then that's that's the reason that I do it. And I just, yeah, I'd like to continue um, down this journey and maybe eventually even become a full-time foster carer, um, you know, but yeah, for me, it's it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life.